In this video, we're going to recognize and classify elementary steps in polar organic reaction mechanisms as one of the 10 patterns in electron flow that we encounter in organic reaction mechanisms. So keep in mind here, every step you draw and every step you see will fit into one of these 10 boxes. And so we're going to practice putting elementary steps in those boxes in this video. Keeping in mind some of the lessons we've learned about resonance and that kind of thing, and not getting too bogged down in the details, focusing on where sigma bonds are made and broken and that sort of thing. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is label each of these steps given the reactants and products and the electron flow in the form of curved arrows. So here are the 10 possible labels. We'll, we'll remind ourselves what these mean as we go through the example problems. And we've got three examples of elementary steps. Now, in the first, let's take stock of what's happening. It is very helpful, very helpful and highly recommended to draw in implied hydrogens in the vicinity of reactive centers in reaction mechanisms. There's no shame in drawing stuff out, right? This will help you keep track of what's going on in terms of bonds made and broken quite frequently. So here, for example, the thing we need to notice is that this CH bond is breaking. And these CH bond electrons are heading to this carbon, which is this carbon in the product. And we could number the carbons to get a sense of this, or we could just notice that this carbon is the second from the end, and it goes from being positive to ha and having only one hydrogen linked to it to neutral and having two hydrogens linked to it. So these CH bonding electrons migrate over like so. This leaves positive charge behind on carbon three, where the CH bond was low, the CH bonding electrons were located initially. So what's happening here is a migration of this sigma bond from carbon one to carbon two. This is what we call the one two rearrangement or a carbocation rearrangement. And in this particular case, it's heavily favored because this is a resonance stabilized carbocation. One point to note about this one is this step could have been drawn with an extra curved arrow like this. This would have generated an alternative resonance form of the structure shown here. And that is equally correct and in all way shape, shapes and forms equivalent to the electron flow you have here. So with reaction mechanisms, although your moves are limited, when it comes to generating alternative resonance forms, you often have multiple options. And this is a good example of this where you could include this arrow showing shifting of the pi electrons, or you could leave it out to keep things simple. That's entirely up to you, and both are equally correct. In the second example here, we have a carbocation. This actually looks very similar to the carbocation above. It's a resonance stabilized allylic carbocation. And there's a curved arrow starting from this oxygen, the lone pair at that oxygen specifically, and headed toward the cationic carbon. The result is the formation of a new oxygen carbon bond between the nucleophilic oxygen, we know it's nucleophilic because it is donating a pair of electrons, and the electrophilic cationic carbon, which we know is electrophilic because it's positively charged, and it's accepting electrons in this elementary step. So what's happening here is the attack of a nucleophile on a six electron cationic center. We've called this A sub N, or nucleophilic attack. All right. Now in the third case, we get into kind of an interesting situation. We've got a ton of curved arrows going on here. Four curved arrows, four bonds all moving at once. How do we even make sense of what's going on here? Well, focus on the sigma bonds. What sigma bonds are being broken or formed in this process? Only one sigma bond is involved. It's the carbon chlorine bond, and that bond is breaking toward chlorine. These other three electron flows are just resonance. And in fact, they're entirely optional. If you look at the cation over here, this is a heavily resonance stabilized carbocation. And leaving those three arrows out would simply generate a resonance form, a valid and significant resonance form, in fact, of the structure that we end up with here. So it's completely fine to leave out those first three curved arrows and just show cleavage of the carbon chlorine bond. That is not optional to leave out because that corresponds to actual chemical change. And what we're showing here is the loss of a group, the chlorine, that is taking a pair of electrons with it. That's what we've called D sub N, departure of a nucleophuge, or more commonly, loss of a leaving group. And the leaving group here is Cl minus. So despite all this resonance electron flow, the essence of this step is loss of a leaving group because the only sigma bond involved is the carbon chlorine sigma bond, and that's breaking toward chlorine. 
let's walk through some mechanisms that you'll actually encounter in organic chemistry one or two and label the elementary steps involved. All right, in the first case here, I have a lone pair on oxygen starting off the electron flow. So this suggests some kind of nucleophilic attack with a lone pair serving as the nucleophile, and that's headed towards a carbon. So this is not a proton transfer. This carbon is not a carbocation, but it's carbocation-like, right? We could draw a resonance form where we push those electrons up to oxygen and leave a carbocation right here. That would then correspond to nucleophilic attack, A sub N. The way we have it drawn here, we're showing addition of the nucleophile to a polarized pi bond, and so we would label this AD sub N, although if you drew, again, the alternative resonance form of this with C plus O minus, this we could just as well classify as attack of a nucleophile, nucleophilic attack. Now, in the second step, we get the reverse of that. We get loss of OR as OR minus and the reformation of the carbon-oxygen pi bond. So this, if we just pay attention to this, looks like loss of a leaving group, but with the extra push from this lone pair on oxygen, this is a beta elimination elementary step completely fine for us to think about it as loss of a leaving group as well, since simply drawing this arrow would lead to a resonance form of this structure. All right, what happens in the last step? Well, now OR minus, which we just generated, comes along and donates a pair of electrons to this H, and the HO bond breaks toward oxygen. That looks like a proton transfer. The net result is the transfer of a proton from this acid to this base. And so this is simply a PT step, and HOR is a byproduct here. The alcohol, conjugate acid of OR minus, is a byproduct that's actually not shown here. In the first step in the second case, we have a pi bond acting as a nucleophile, and we'll have occasion to do this later in organic chemistry one in looking at reactions of alkenes. This turns out to be benzene, an aromatic compound, and you'll see this reaction most likely in organic chemistry two. But what's happening here kind of depends on your perspective. If you look at it from the perspective of the SO double bond, this looks like the addition of a nucleophile, whatever this nucleophile may be that's donating this pair of electrons, to the polarized SO double bond with the SO electrons headed up to oxygen. But if you think of that sulfur as positively charged and draw the alternative resonance form of this, this looks also like attack of an electrophile on the pi bonding nucleophile. So we could think about this kind of either way. It's nucleophilic addition to the polarized SO double bond and attack of an electrophile, SO3, on the pi system of benzene. Really a step that you'll focus on in organic chemistry too, so the details of that classification are not super important. What's going on in step two? Well, in step two, I've got an oxygen donating a lone pair to a hydrogen with the CH bond breaking towards carbon. This is nothing more than a proton transfer, right? H3O plus is generated, the conjugate acid of H2O, and this aromatic compound that we generate is actually the conjugate base of this compound. It's lost a proton relative to the initial compound. So that's nothing more than a proton transfer. And the last step is also a proton transfer with this O minus picking up a proton from H3O plus to form the neutral product. My hope is that as you work with reaction mechanisms, you'll recognize these patterns in electron flow and learn to think about reaction mechanisms on a higher level than this and then just this arrow goes here, that arrow goes there. The danger with looking at specific curved arrows is you get too involved in the specific context of that particular reaction. What you really want to be able to do by the end of organic chemistry too, for sure, is recognize analogies between related elementary steps. Recognize that this proton transfer is fundamentally very, very similar to this proton transfer in terms of the bonds made and broken. This allows us to draw analogies across reactions that look very different at first glance. When they share a key elementary step in common, we can often think about them and talk about them in similar ways. And you'll do this throughout organic chemistry one and two with analogous reactions, reactions that have analogous mechanisms. We can kind of put them in the same mental box and think about them and talk about them the same way. That's the beauty of this elementary step classification approach. We're not so bogged down in memorizing the details of specific electron flows. We're seeing at a higher level how electron flow, how elementary steps kind of manifest themselves 
through these electron flows across different related reactions, compressing a huge amount of information in the typical organic chemistry sequence into manageable amounts.